Yes, yes, mustn't be late for the damned opera. The war doesn't even start until the fifth act. Since rising to fame in 1795 by using artillery to defend the Tuileries of a royalist attack, Napoleon had made many enemies. Even more so, he has had many assassination attempts on his life that range from poison in a snuff box to a plot that mirrored that of Caesar's assassination. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Real History Of, where I take a look at the real figures and events that inspired the settings of popular video games. I'm your host Christopher, the video game historian, and today I'm going to take a look at the inspiration behind the co-op mission Machine Infernal in Assassin's Creed Unity. This is the real history of the plot of the Rue saint Nicais. On Christmas Eve 1800, royalist conspirators Joseph Picot de Limillon, Pierre Robinard de Saint-Eugène, and Francois-Jean Carbon attempted to assassinate Napoleon as he made his way to the opera to see Hayden's creation. Their plan was to use an improvised explosive device which came to be known as a machine infernale. This device was a barrel filled with gunpowder and shrapnel and secured to a horse-drawn cart that when detonated would cause serious damage to the immediate area. Each of the three conspirators had a role to play in the assassination. Francois-Jean Carbon was to drive the cart and park it on the Rue saint nicaise at the intersection of Rue des Maltes. Once there, he had paid a 12-year-old girl named Pencil to hold the reins of the horses for 12 sous. Joseph Picot was to be the lookout and when Napoleon's carriage was in position was to give the signal to saint Regent who was then responsible for lighting the fuse and causing the detonation. As the carriage drove closer, it is said that Joseph Picot had lost his nerve and gave the signal too late. When the device did explode, Napoleon was already out of harm's way for it to do any damage. The device will, however, have killed and wounded 52 people, including 12 who were in the cafe and the little girl. Knowing they failed, the conspirators, especially saint Regen, had put blame on the actual gunpowder they used in the device, saying that it was of poor quality and that itself is what delayed the detonation. While this may have been one reason why the plot had failed, there was also another that worked against the conspirators in achieving their goal. That was Napoleon himself. There are two theories as to what really happened before leaving for the opera. One account states that Napoleon's driver Germain was drinking a few too many in celebration of the holidays, and as such, was driving too fast through the streets. Another account states that Napoleon himself had told his driver to drive as fast as he could as he didn't want to be late for the opera. Whichever the reason, the fact that they were driving a bit too fast did save his life that night. His wife Josephine and her party also had a delayed departure, which is why they managed to not be harmed in the explosion. Before leaving, Josephine and General Jean Rapp had a disagreement over which shawl Josephine should wear. He had remarked that, you are not wearing your shawl tonight with your usual grace. When the bomb did go off, the only person injured in the party was Napoleon's stepdaughter, Hortense, who suffered a small cut on her wrist. Despite the event, Napoleon's, along with Josephine's carriages, both made it to the opera, where they were greeted by those in attendance. Napoleon wanted to show that he would not be intimidated, though they would leave the opera before the final act. When he returned, he met with high-ranking government officials and said to them that, you should not have come to see me. You should go immediately to help those poor wretched people. When the minister of police showed up, Napoleon shouted and started to blame the Jacobins for the incident. Fouch, who was an ex-Jacobin himself, suggested that perhaps the royalists were the ones behind the plot, to which Napoleon responded that Fouch should go hang himself in such circumstances. As Fouch went out to investigate the event and to track down the royalists responsible, over 100 Jacobins were exiled out of France. Napoleon was adamant that the Jacobins were behind this plot, as five months earlier, a similar plot was carried out with daggers. As Fouch canvassed the city, he came across a grain dealer who recognized pieces of the cart and horse as those that he had sold to a peddler. They were able to ID the peddler as a chouan by the name of Francois-Jean Carbon, who was arrested at Notre Dame. Carbone named his accomplices in the conspiracy as Pierre Robindal de saint Regen and Joseph Pierre Picot, both ex-nobles and veterans of French wars. Both saint Regen and Carbone were arrested and executed at the guillotine for their part in the conspiracy on April 21, 1801, at the Place de Grève, both dressed in red, representing parasites. Joseph Picot, however, would escape to America, living out the rest of his days until his death in 1826 in Charleston, South Carolina. I hope you all enjoyed this week's episode of The Real History Of, 
and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time. Nice work. Time to get out of here. Oh. Yeah.